Sam, you lazy bum. Do a leak video. Alright, alright. Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of Leaked. Today, we're going to take a look at the French AMX M4 model 1949. This is going to be a premium tier 8 French heavy tank, likely replacing the FCM 50T in the gift shop. Now, why the replacement? Well, the FCM 50T has 400 meters of view range with 232 millimeters of penetration. That's super good for a regular tier 8 heavy tank, let alone premium tank. So the FCM is kinda broken in my opinion and that's why it's probably going to be replaced by the Model 1949 version of the M4. Now I think they're replacing all the tanks with crazy good view range such as the FCM 36 Pack 40, the Tier 3 French tank destroyer. That thing has 400 meters of view range at Tier 3. Broken. So that thing already got shelved. Same goes for the SU-85I, the Tier 5 Russian tank destroyer. That thing has above average view range by 20 meters, I believe, with preferential matchmaking. So broken too. So those two tanks are broken. Same goes for the FCM a little bit. So that's why the replacement. Now let's talk about the ARL44 then move on to the AMX M4 project and then we'll talk about the AMX 50s all in one. So today we'll cover all the history of the M4 project in a sense. And let's start with a brief history about the ARL44. So this vehicle was designed in secret by the resistance engineers. So when France was occupied by the Germans, they came up with the ARL-44. Now this tank is not that good because originally it had the Charles B1 vertical coil spring suspension with the 76mm M1 cannon from the Americans or the British 17 pounder. So this tank is super mediocre at best in comparison to the likes of Tiger 2s or King Tigers or IS-3s. So this tank is not that good. And when France was liberated in 1944, their infrastructure was highly damaged so they could not produce a lot of tanks at that time. And they were even lacking in paper to do blueprints of stuff. So producing tanks were pretty hard between 1945 to 1950s. So they were using the leftover Panthers and ARL 44s and you know Sherman tanks and Pershing tanks. And by 1950s, America was leasing out the M47 Patton for free to allies because they were developing the M48 Patton during the Korean War. And the M47 Patton were freely given to the French. So ARL 44 is mostly used as target practice. So nothing really came out of the ARL 44 project but during 1945 they started the M4 project or project 141 called the M4 so it's designed to have a medium tank with better mobility than the ARL 44 and better firepower so a 90 millimeter anti-aircraft naval gun was installed onto this vehicle and originally it was planned to have 30 millimeters of frontal armor so this tank is the tier 7-esque tank, but the tier 7 has 80-ish millimeters of armor, whatever it is. But originally it was designed to have 30 millimeters of armor, which was super crap. So this vehicle was based on the Tiger II, has overlapping interleaf road wheels and the Panther-esque, Tiger-esque hull that the Germans like with the engine deck and the vents on the back. So a lot of details were taken from that vehicle or those German vehicles and put onto the M4 project. But this tank never made it because the 30 millimeters of armor is god awful, right? So during 1945 and 1950s, there were a lot of projects or versions of the M4. And today's version or today's tank is the 1949 version of the vehicle. Now, the M4 project is closely, very closely related to the AMX-50 because the AMX-50 is just a M4 project 
with the same interleaf hull armor or hull shape suspension with the oscillating turret and a 100 millimeter gun. That's the first AMX 5100. And then came the AMX 5120 and 50B and yada yada yada. But so basically, today's tank is the last, seemingly the last AMX M4 before the release of the AMX 5100, so to speak. Now, you already know the rest of the history going from the AMX 50 project, which never came into fruition because the oscillating turret was not that good against nuclear, chemical, and biological contamination. And, you know, the large size of the turret, of the oscillating turret for the 120mm gun against IS-3 was not that good in comparison to the likes of Conquerors or M103s. Yeah. And the armor is not good against hollow charge or shape charges, which is heat shells. So the whole oscillating project was not that good on a medium tank or heavy tank so the only good things about the oscillating turret is for the french amx 13s so the whole 50 project was not that good but the whole results from the amx 15 were carried on to the amx 30. so yeah that's the whole timeline history in a nutshell but from the amx m4 came the amx 50 which also branch out, if you will, into stuff like the Lorraine 40T, the Lorraine artillery from that, and what's that called? The Canon Automator AMX 50 Fosh, the Canon Dessault Lorraine, which is a tank destroyer based on the Lorraine chassis. So all that stuff came from the M4 project, but today's vehicle is the last before the AMX 5100. Whew, that was a long history. Ugh. Oops, forgot to mention, the Chasseur de Chars, or CDC, the AMX CDC, was actually based on the initial version of the AMX M4 model 1945. So when that vehicle had the 30 millimeters of frontal armor and 30 metric tons of weight, so the Chasseur de Chars was based on that chassis. Small fun fact, alright. And here are the HD renders of the AMX M4 model 1949. I know, I've been so lazy that even the HD renders are out. <laughs> God damn it, Sam. God damn it. But as you can see, the chassis looks almost the same as AMX 5100. So the design shape is nearly the same. But this vehicle has reinforced frontal plate, doubled that of the 5100. So a lot more armor. Now it also has the Panther esque hull shape or Tiger-esque, so as you can see, with the engine deck and the vents, the interleaved overlapping road wheels. Now this design was meant to have less tension and pressure on the suspension for the tank, but it's superfluous because after the war ended, the supply of rubber is back to normal, so you don't have to do the overlapping of the road wheels like this anymore. So that's because the lack of rubber good quality rubber during the war times but small details so this tank is yeah not that bad looking I mean it's not super ugly like most French tanks I guess so it's all right in terms of size shape it has a big cupola but eh, it's not that big so it's not AMX 30B esque so that's good but yeah that's all right not that bad looking, not that bad. So a lot of components were taken from the Germans, the engine deck, the road wheels, the shape of the hull. So here are the collision models as well as the non-HD versions I already had. As you can see from the collision models, this tank has a lot of armor at the front. 180 millimeters slope backwards at 50 degrees so this upper plate is about 235 millimeters effective. That's very good for any tier 8 heavy tank, let alone French heavy tank. So that's insane. This spare track link also provides you with 20 millimeters of armor extra. So this is 200 millimeters slope backwards at 50 degrees, which is about 
260 millimeters effective. That's very good. This cheek right here is 150 millimeters, slope backwards at 45 degrees and upwards a little bit. So that's at least 200 millimeters plus. So that's very, very good. The lower plate is 120 millimeters, slope backwards as well at 60 ish degrees about. So yeah, the frontal hull armor is very good. The turret armor is also no joke. 250 millimeters on the cheeks. The mantlet is also 250. The turret ring as well. So that's also very good. The mantlet is pretty decent size. It's not that small. But you do have a commander cupola weak spot. So this is the only weak spot on the frontal plate or frontal end of the tank. So you could go hold down and mitigate this weak spot by just turning the mantlet downwards and just hiding the cupola. But yeah, you do have have some sort of weak spot, right? But it's not that big. So this tank is a French heavy tank. It has a lot of armor than say the VK 4501A or I don't know, the T34 or the KV5. Maybe not the KV5, but still, it's a French tank. It's insane. Now the rest of the tank is yeah, all green, super green. <laughs> 40 millimeters on the sides of the hull and rear. So that's not good. <laughs> you cannot go side scraping unless you're facing like low caliber guns and you know how to side scrape, but 40 millimeters. Oh God, that's rough. And side of the turret is 120. The ass end of the turret is 60, so Artillery loves to shoot at your engine deck and side armor is super weak. So just always point your front towards enemies. But yeah, this tank is only strong on the frontal end. The side and rear is not that good. Oh well. And here are the main stats for this vehicle. Now it's going to be a premium tier 8 heavy tank. So it's going to cost you at least 10,000 gold at least. So it's not cheap. Has 1450 hit points, which is below average, but it's French. So it's fair, I guess. Engine power is 1000 horsepower, weighs about 70 tons. So power to weight ratio is 14.3 ish. Quite good. And it weighs 70 tons. So you could go ramming where average ton is about 50 ish at tier eight. So pretty heavy of a tank. Top speed is 40 kilometers per hour. Very good. Reverse is 18. Decent. Hull traverse is 30 degrees per second. Good. Tur traverse is 36 degrees per second. 37-ish with vents. Very good. Terrain resistance is 1.27 for hard, 1.43 for medium, and 2.11 for soft. Below average a little bit but fair I, I say fair view range is 360 meters wow that's borderline Russian Russian tanks the IS-3 the KV-4 has 350 meters of view range this has 10 more Ooh, this is bad I mean it has the armor so I guess you're playing this thing like a Russian tank? Is it a brawler? You have no side armor, but face hugging this tank is going to be pretty rough. Oh, okay. I guess that's fair, but this is still pretty bad. 360 meters of view range. The American has 380, I believe. Same goes for the Tiger 2. Yeah, this is bad. Radio range is above 700, so standard. That's good. All armor, 180 at the front, 40 at the sides, 40 at the rear. Only point the front end, all right? Turret armor is 250 at the front, 120 at the sides, and 60 at the rear. Point the front. 105 millimeter gun, fires AP, APCR, and high explosive. 232 millimeters of penetration, very good for a tier eight heavy tank. Damage is only 300, but DPM is above average 
so that's good 2100 ish could go up to 2400 ish with the gun rammer and vents so not that bad reloads every 7.7 7 seconds I believe with the gun rammer and vents and crew skills yeah 7.7 7 ish my math sucks accuracy 0 0.345 very good aim time is slightly long but not that much 2.59 seconds so a little bit high but it's not auto loader but I guess that's fair gun depression is 10 degrees very good gun elevation is 20 degrees so this tank is fast ish has armor but no view range and quite good accurate gun but slightly long aim time but decent penetration very good penetration actually I don't know what to say it's surprising for a French vehicle French this is French not Russian it's not a heavy it's a heavy tank it's not French heavy tank huh and let's compare the AMX M4 model 1949 with the FCM 50T now armor first well it's no comparison obviously the FCM has about 140 ish millimeters effective whereas on the AMX 235 so yeah the turret is also better 250 millimeters whereas on the FCM is 120 yeah the armor is obviously better on the AMX but the FCM has better side armor <laughs> surprisingly 40 millimeters on the AMX in comparison to the 80 millimeters wah 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 oh well yeah, we always use the front. Nobody uses the side armor. Who cares about side armor? It doesn't matter. 40 is the same as 80 ish at tier 8. Doesn't matter. Alright, let's take a look at the other stats. Hit points wise, it has less hit points than the FCM and less than average. So it's French, it's fair. Engine power is the same. Power to weight ratio is not as fast, but it's still above average. So 14.29 is faster than the average of 12.12. .12. So that's good. But this tank weighs a bit more than the FCM. So you could go ramming with it. That's quite good. All right, top speed is slower. So I guess that's fair for the armor. Mish. Hull traverse is also slower by 10 degrees, but faster than the average. Fair. Top speed is also faster than the average. Fair. Turret traverse is above average, but not as fast as the FCM. So it's almost the same. Huh. Terrain resistance is worse than the FCM, but not that much. Yeah, it's not that much. It's still below average than the average tier 8 heavy tanks. But that's fair. It has armor, so I'm taking armor into account. Now the view range is also in no comparison to the FCM. Alright. Only 360 meters, whereas the FCM has 400 meters. And the average is 373, so this tank is almost blind. Almost. But... It's better than the Russians. Better than the Russians. So, fair trade. Uh, it has armor. So, that's the main strong point about this vehicle. <laughs> penetration wise, way better penetration. Has the same penetration as AMX 5100, but this is a single shot cannon. So, that's quite good. Better Alpha too. Better DPM. Hmm. Same accuracy. Crappier aim time but better gun depression by 2 degrees so that's not bad this thing has armor this thing does not well the FCM plays like a gigantic version of an AMX CDC esque esque alright it's not the same thing but that's basically how you play this thing not as a heavy tank you play this thing as a medium tank if I have one, but I will play this thing as a medium tank because the armor is non-existent at tier 8. 140-ish millimeters 
is the same as a uh, AMX CDC 30 ish millimeters. So, armor wise, bleh. but this thing has armor <laughs> 180 at the front, slope backwards at 50 degrees, the same as the AMX 5100. So, you can compare the sloping with this vehicle right here, but yeah. It has 180 at the front, whereas the AMX 5100 has only 90. That's double <laughs> of that. <laughs> this thing has armor. This thing does not. This thing is okay-ish. It's faster than the average, so okay. But this thing... Uh, uh, well, it still has better side armor than the AMX 5100. So that's fair. Alright. Yeah. This is not a French tank, it's like Russian, mixed with some parts of American with crappy side armor and rear armor. Huh. And the final opinion about the AMX M4 Model 1949 is that this vehicle is probably just as OP as the FCM 50T. So, yeah, it has a lot of armor for a French, French heavy tank. It's a French tank. Alright, get it through your head. It's a French vehicle, but it has armor. So is it the first French heavy to have repair skill necessary on this vehicle? <laughs> Whereas you have like other skills like recon or snapshot for your crew skills. But for this vehicle, you have repairs. <laughs> wow, it's very good. Accuracy, 0.345. That's very good. Penetration, very good. DPM, above average, good. Gun depression, 10 degrees, good. View range, not that good. But it has armor, so that's a trade-off. Terrain resistance, fair, average, all right. Turret traverse, hull traverse, good, very good, above average. Top speed, good. Power to weight ratio, not that slow, good. 70 tons, pretty heavy, good. Hit points, uh, it's French, but it's around the average ballpark, so fair. Yeah. Now, the armor is a joke to tier 9s and tier 10s. Fair, alright? 230 ish millimeters effective. Eh, tier 9s and tier 10s, no problem penetrating. But you could go haul down and snipe. And it's a premium tank, so you make a lot of credits if you penetrate. And 232 millimeters of penetration with. 0.345 accuracy, you could penetrate tier 10s reliably without using gold shells. So you make a lot of credits. This tank is a broken. Is a broken? Alright. It's like the T-34, the American premium tier 8 heavy tank, but has frontal hull armor and you could go hull down too. It's a little bit faster as well. Wow. But the only downside is the view range. The same crappy view range like the T-34, so, oh well, but, eh, that's what teammates are for, so go scout light tanks, but, yeah, it's pretty fair, pretty fair, so, I probably will enjoy buying one, but don't have the money, so, oh well, but, what interesting point this tank brings up is the resurfacing of older, scrapped French tanks. So recently, we have the Renault R36, the G1R, which was on the actual on the test server a few years back, like two years back. They had the model and stuff already made for those tanks, but those tanks were scrapped. There were a lot of French tanks that were also scrapped, like this vehicle right here. So this is the AMX 50. TCB. So this is a conventional turret on the AMX 50B. So yeah, it's like a M103 for the French, but it's another step towards another separate line for the French heavy tanks. So it's a long shot. I'm thinking about it, but it's a long shot that we might get the second line of heavy tanks for the French. I know some parts of that line already, like the AMX 60T. We might even get the AMX 70, which is a super heavy tank for the French, but I'll probably cover it with the what if video if I have time. But 
a lot of interesting stuff for the French. Now the main reason that they scrapped this second line for the French heavy tanks is because back then for patch 7.0 I believe, the French vehicles alongside with the Chinese vehicles were not as popular. So the whole idea was scrapped because Wargaming feel that they will not make enough money from these tech lines. So that's the whole reason that these tanks were scrapped. But you saw the resurfacing of the G1R as well as the R36 for the AMX 30B line. But we might able to see the second French heavy tank line if everything goes well. So I'm hoping for it. I'm really hoping for it. But this vehicle is basically a French version, a version of the M103. Show. All I can do is hope. But thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I haven't made a leak video in like half a month. I know I suck. Ugh. Psh, I slap myself for you. Psh, psh, psh. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Sha,